colour or black and white? This is often a question when considering the final image, but it's also a statement to say the image could work either way. In this video, however, I aim to shed some light on my decision making. Well, I'm back in the Lake District, and as you can see, the rain has followed me. So be it. If you watched my last video, it shouldn't be a problem when it comes to photography. Now, the subject of today's video is black and white versus colour. What makes that choice for me, whether I shoot in mono or to include colour in my photography? A massive part of that is, of course, the conditions. Let's wipe the lens first of many time, I'm sure, today. Yeah, it's all about conditions. Uh, but the thing is, I, I always start with that mindset, right? It's raining, it's overcast, it's gloomy. I'm going to shoot black and white, but it's not always the case. So we'll uh, go into that in a bit further. I'm in the northwestern region of the Lake District and we've got an epic hike today. I fancied a hike, it's been quite a while. Forecast today is rain, persistent rain, all day. At some point, maybe a couple of hours is going to get really heavy, so the forecast says. So I am prepared um, for the rain, um, waterproof, waterproof waterproof pants by the way uh, cover there for the holster in there is my 70 to 200 i'm just going to commit again to the 70 to 200 today with that uh, large lens hood which will protect the front element now black and white or color as i said before the moodiness the overcast conditions always lead me to shooting black and white photography and in a way I need to change that mindset because if I'm just homed in and shooting black and white I might miss opportunities for colour and this is a good example I'll speak to you uh, in a little bit about what colours work best let's whack this lens and I've just seen this I haven't explained where I am I'll do that in a minute but just let's just look at that, that Nice weaving green on the path and the uh, bracken, the browns and the bracken, always a good contrast. Then you've got the dark fells in the background. Um, but yeah, right, okay, bit of an introduction where I am. My plan, my plan, we'll see if this happened, is to walk the Coldale Horseshoe. I'm heading up to Grisdale Pike now, we'll see where we are then. Might head over to Hope Gale Head. Uh, and then we'll cross down up to uh, Crag Hill, down Scar Crag Sail, and then we might head up to Causey Pike, but I want to get out of sight done as well. Quick look at that's Causey Pike here. Yeah. The dinosaur back. Right, I'm going to shoot this, and then I'm going to talk to you about what colours work best. There is a list of colours that complement each other, which, and over time, as a landscape photographer you will see this when in the field. Often the colours that lie opposite each other of the colour wheel, such as the warm colours against the cooler ones for example, stand out. This was a shot taken last year with the warm browns and bronzes of the dying bracken against the cooler blues. You could argue it may have worked in black and white, but the colours were too good to be ignored. It doesn't help that I'm shooting into the rain, so the rain is actually hitting the front element. Fine greens, yellows and blues work well, and in the landscape this is widely seen during the spring months here in the UK, with the blue sky against the green and yellows of the grasses and foliage. Of course there is bluebell season, with the blue stroke purple stroke mauve, against the lush greens and yellows of the woodland foliage. I don't see many black and white versions from bluebell season. I'm 
love that scene there. I shot that before. That's basically Causey Pike. Love the layers going on. This behind me is Grisdale Pike. The conditions are quite horrendous. I've actually got a lull, actually, I mean, said that in the weather, but really hard wind, rain, it really is difficult, actually. It really is hard to photograph in conditions like this. I know in one of my last vlogs I said, get out no matter what the conditions. And yeah, you can still shoot, don't get me wrong, but your photos will be crap. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's hard work. I'm bearing in mind that this is the first hike since Christmas, you know, when I've eaten a lot of sweets, etc. I'm sure I say that every year, but so be it. Um, colour, black and white. So, black and white, what I look for is that simplicity, minimalist, minimalist uh, composition, a strong structure uh, when it comes to focal point and also some nice contrast. Uh, we haven't got a lot of that today. Um, heading over towards Causey Pike, little bit of contrast uh, but I've shot that before on the telephoto uh, there's a nice bit of mood going on over on uh, is that Crag Hill I believe that's nice but nothing really standing out in terms of black and white colour I know I haven't really chosen the right season for uh, the, the theme of the video colour or black and white you know being middle of winter um, what we've got, we've got some yellows here, yellow blue looks good, again another good contrast, um, but what I'm saying is I'm going to struggle with black and white today as well, there's not that much contrast because the visibility is poor, lots of haze, I know in post process I could play around with the uh, dehaze. Uh, but it's nothing really standing out as yet. Right, I'm going to make my way up to Grisdale Pike and then see where we are, but I'm struggling. I'll be honest, I'm struggling. Now, I want to show you this example we shot I took recently of Crummock Water in the Lake District. I like the composition here, which is still key, of course, and how the light makes the trees pop. You could argue that this would work in black and white, but sure, you would agree. Those yellows and greens against the different shades of blue are really eye-catching. Then we move on to autumn, where the season explodes into colour with the orange hues against the yellows and greens. Made it, Grisdale Pike. Ah, oh, it's horrendous. Great visibility. Not. Do you know what? I think there's a shot of you. Greys and greens. That lovely layer in there. Now I've got me 35mm with me. So I'm going to have a go at it. Hiking wise, I don't know. I'm after bail. We'll have to see. I had to bail, I had to concede it got the better of me and I think it's the right decision. One, it got quite dangerous actually, top of Grisdale Pike, I had to kneel down at one point because the wind was horrendous, absolutely. Visibility, nothing there, you probably saw it. Uh, so pointless really to carry on. It's quite late in the day, what is it, about two o'clock now? It, it's, I keep looking over there because there's, there's a shot, I'll show it in a minute. Um, yeah, two, about, what, about two o'clock uh, now, and sun sets about half four, so not long to go. Uh, but see, so yeah, I've, I've made the right decision. To be honest, I was expecting conditions like this today, but I always go with a chance that you never know. It's a late district, you know, something could happen. You could get that breaking clouds, that big shaft of light or something. 
uh, exactly where you want it to be. That was, a, that was a nice shot. I always that's I always think that that anyway. Optimistic is what I am. That's nice. Look, Cozy Pike framed. I take that. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I showed this shot as well. This is where colour works. This wouldn't work with black and white. Um, layering, layering, uh, greens and browns. That might make a nice square. So, yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be back. I don't know when I'll be back. We're doing some route. Um, covering the other fells which I didn't cover today but yeah one of those days where photography in general wasn't good or the options weren't there I'll show you what I've got anyway um, until next time keep smiling look after yourself and bye bye for now